everyone. I'm here now. Sorry, you guys can probably hear that. Just popping my knuckles. So I guess I'll type something so when you guys show up, I can ask. Um, hey, everybody. Sorry about the issues with my current email situation. So about that, um, I got shut out of my email around five o'clock yesterday and one stop and E2L. So I have no access to anything. And it's because a bunch of email accounts on campus were hacked and mine was included. So my account was compromised. They shut it down. I have no email, no D2L, no one stop. So, um, they're having to scan a bunch of computers and hopefully they will get back to me at some point soon. Um, but until then, you can go ahead and use my Gmail account to send me non-grade related questions. Okay, so we can't send sensitive information to my Gmail, but um, you guys can send me just general questions about stuff, you know, and I let you do that anyway. My Gmail account, I'm not going to say on the internet, but you guys have it in the syllabus that's online. And also I had the Dean's secretary send it to you today in an email, so you have access to it. Some of you've already messaged me, so I know it, it got sent out. Um, it has cooled off some, so now I get onesie pajamas um, and you get to see me with onesie pajamas. So that's what we do now. And uh, feel free to start asking questions. So there we go. There's some like coyotes or something howling outside that I can hear in here. So if you guys can hear them, I'm sorry. It's weird as my dogs don't even seem to care. right behind him with the dogs or something howling out there and he just doesn't even care so apparently that's just the night we're gonna have who's Caitlin Sue we did not not yet that's chapter five we haven't gotten there yet well we technically went over diastereomers so this is trans isomers or a type of diastereomer they're not the only type of diastereomer, but they're one type. I don't know if you guys can I'm curious. I don't know how good the microphone is on this. I didn't prepare a show tune or anything, so. 
There are three of you watching. Ask me questions. I'm just going to start grabbing stuff on my vanity. Start by doing a review. Here's my favorite room spray. This is Sam Hain by Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. It smells like Halloween. Yeah. At RBC the other day. You could buy a duck. And I think I got a werewolf duck. I'm not exactly sure what a werewolf duck is, but that's the one I picked out because it's a werewolf duck. I'll just keep grabbing stuff. Somebody's got to ask me questions. Oh, hi guys. Okay, now I see questions. Uh, who's Fiona? Do I play any sports or dance? No. Hi, Joanna. What numbers did you put out? Should we number them because we name them? It has to be in alphabetical, so does our lowest number also have to be on the first one that comes alphabetically? No. Um, so you're talking specifically about naming? Uh, and that's a good question. I don't know if you remember me saying this in class. I don't know if I wrote it on the board. Um, so it might have just kind of been mentioned in passing. So let me show you something. Let me give you an example. So if I put something, let's see, let me do a methyl first and then a bromo. Okay. So Make sure you guys can see this. That looks good to me. Okay. So, click my little button. And what you should see here is that you have a methyl on carbon two and a bromine on carbon, what is that, four. So, you still put the bromo first. You go straight by alphabet um, and you don't include the numbering at all. So, I mean, you have to have the numbering on there, but it's not. Uh, relevant in where the part of the name it goes. I hope that makes sense. If I had that switched and I had a bromine there and a chloro there, so just something where now number two is alphabetical uh, first. Oh, shoot. There we go. 
So you can kind of see the difference there. The bromo still comes first regardless of what the number is because bromo is a B. And so the Bs come before M or C or whatever else you use. And then let's see, Ryan, draw a Newman projection along a C2C3 bond. When I draw this, I get a different first carbon and second carbon than the answer in the text. So, draw a Newman projection along C2 and C3. So, two butanol. Okay. Um, Butanol. Okay. So we're looking along the C2, C3 bond. So we are looking down that bond right there between those two. Let me pull up a Newman projection. Um, you did not say which Newman projection, so I don't know if you wanted eclipsed or staggered. Okay. So on, if we want to just kind of number this, actually let me, Copy, paste, give me a second, there we go, I know it's a little grainy, I'm sorry, um, I just copy and paste it over and then try and blow it up, so if we have this here, So this carbon here is carbon one, two, three, four. So when I draw the Newman projection, um, this one here should be my dark circle, and then that should be the circle behind it. So this one right here is carbon two, and then the one behind it is carbon three. So on carbon three, well, let's just do carbon one or uh, two. So on carbon two, I have a methyl group. I have a hydrogen and I have an OH attached. And then on carbon three, I have two hydrogens and then a CH3. Yeah. So, I mean, that we can rotate, right? Uh, you might have inverted something like this methyl group in this OH. Like if it doesn't go H, OH, CH3. Um, like in that direction, but instead you have it as a different kind of orientation. It's actually what we'll be covering in chapter five, so don't worry about that yet. Um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what you got, Ryan, so let me know if that makes sense. Has the carbons reversed? Hmm. Well, Ryan, it sounds like you have a correct answer and maybe the book has the wrong answer on that. There are some errors in your book. Nobody's pointed that one out to me before, but um, if I had to guess, that's probably what's going on. So, Quincy, do 1,3-diaxial interactions have too much steric strain, torsional strain, or ring strain? Well, let's think about what all those words mean and that should give us the answer. So let me get something bigger. Okay. So a 1-3 diaxial interaction would look something like maybe a CH3 and I'll just put the other one there and an OH group. So torsional strain 
if you remember, is when two atoms are eclipsing each other, and we think it's because their anti-bonding orbitals are kind of bumping. So that happens if you have two groups like adjacent to each other. These two groups are not adjacent to each other. They're separated by a whole other carbon. So those are too far apart to experience anything like proportional strain, like what we see in ethane. So remember when, um, when you have ethane, if, my dogs are snorting in the background, sorry. If I have something like ethane where it has been rotated to the point where these two groups, that looks like a bond, but I don't want that to look like a bond, I'm sorry. So these two groups and these two groups and then these two groups. If you have the model kit so that those are all eclipsing each other, then that's where you're going to get portional strain, okay? Um, ring strain only happens inside of a ring. One, three diaxial interactions are not inside of a ring. They're attached to a ring, but ring strain is where you have something like, um, like cyclobutane and the bond angles there are only about 90 degrees, but that's an sp3 hybridized carbon that needs to have 109.5 degree bond angles. So that's what ring strain is. That has nothing to do with 1,3 diaxial interactions because those groups are not part of a ring at all. Like they're not inside the ring. Um, so then lastly, steric strain is where groups are bumping into each other. And so if you look at the methyl I have on the cyclohexane, and the alcohol, the alcohol, hi Twinkie. You like the cold, don't you? I bet you guys have risky puppies too right now. Um, but if you're looking at these two groups, we can use that. That doesn't look good at all. Let me try that again. We can use that little symbol to indicate that they're kind of butting up close to each other, or you can kind of show it, show it with a dotted line. I guess it's going to look like a dash line now. Um, those are two different ways that you can kind of indicate that. So. 1,3 diaxial interactions are really just steric strain, meaning stuff's running into each other, like the actual atoms themselves are running into each other. Let me know if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Hi, Austin. When we use insect isoturt versus the number on the parent chain with light to designate substituent location. Thanks, Rihanna. Um, so Austin, when do we use it? If I ask you, I, generally speaking, I will give you the actual um, name and then you'll draw the structure. Otherwise, I would have to say something to the effect of use um, non IUPAC insect isoturt to name this molecule. Like I'd have to tell you to do that. Otherwise, you'd have to kind of understand that it was going to be an IUPAC name. I'd have to be clear on that. Now, if I gave you something um, and, shoot, which screen do I have up? Okay. If I gave you something like, um, Here we go. If I asked you to name that, I would accept at this point two names for this molecule. So the first one uh, would be naming it like a substituted, a methyl substituted propanol. And so we could call that uh, two methyl Pan one all. So that would be the IUPAC name, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Or if you wanted to name that as isobutanol, if I can spell it, 
I would also count that as correct. I mean, that that is isobutanol. So if you want to do it that way, I'm fine with that also. Um, I wouldn't count off either way. They're both correct names for it. Compounds with parentheses. All right, let me see, Ryan, if I can actually, so that's actually pretty simple. Um, I didn't cover problems like that in class specifically, but there are some example, uh, like it talks about it in the book. Oh, well, where did it go? Like I copied it. And paste. Nope, not happening. Okay, so let me... CH32, CH, CH2, CH, okay, I think I got it. So, um, this is not going to have superscripts and subscripts, I'm sorry. Hi, hon. Hello. Thanks. husband made me tea because I was cold. So Ryan, I know this isn't exactly the one that you had there, but um, I think it, I can show you still the same thing. So what you have to do when you look at this, let me make sure that's big enough for you guys to see. It's pretty tiny. Um, hopefully you can see that. Goodness gracious. Okay. Sometimes I hate paint. Okay. So what I would need you to look at is um, right there where it says CH32. Oh, I added an extra apostrophe in there. I'm sorry. Or parentheses. So CH32. Hey, Red Dog. CH32 CH. So what that means is I have a carbon here with a hydrogen on it in two CH3 groups. Then I have this CH2, CH2, okay. And I'm just kind of drawing this out longhand so you can see it all. Although my handwriting on a screen is even worse than it is on a board. And then this part here, CH2, three, that means I have three more CH2 groups. And then lastly at the end, there's a CH3. So you really just use them to kind of truncate. Um, oops. It can basically make you able to write the condensed formula in one line for certain things. Um, let's see if I can. Oh my gosh, you are so loud to sit down, Red. I'm so sorry, guys. I, I do the, these videos in my bedrooms and stuff because otherwise the dogs howl and fuss at me the whole time. But they tend to leave me alone in here. Let's say I have um, CH3C OH2. Whoops. Here we go. CH2, C, I'll give you a second to try and do that one. Oh, you know what, Ryan? I 
misread your question. I thought you said you were having trouble drawing them. I didn't realize you were having trouble naming them. So we can do that also. I'll have you name both of these. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. I'm gonna make this small for a second and then extend. Make it big again and scroll down. Okay, so hopefully what you have for your molecule is something that looks like a C. Well, you know what? Since you said you weren't having trouble drawing them, you were just having trouble naming them. What I have is a chain with one, two, three, four, um, basically four carbons, okay? On carbon two right here, I have two alcohols. Check also known as a diol, then CH2, got that, and then that last carbon has three CH3s. Okay, so um, in this example, because I didn't realize you were having trouble naming it, I gave you one that would be a little bit more difficult to name, but basically what you need to trust me on right now is that I need you to number that carbon one. I still find my longest chain. So in this case, it's a pentane. Um, so I have two, two diol, um, pentane. And then on carbon four, I have two methyls. So to put this all together, I would end up with four comma four dash dimethyl pentane, pentane, right? But then you cut off the E and put in two, two, diol. So that's how I would name that one. Um, I'm going to scroll back up. And then we can name this one up here on the top. So again, we need the longest possible chain of carbons. So that would look something, you could either select the uh, carbon on top or the carbon on bottom. Um, I'll just go ahead and pick, come here. Just pick the one on the top. So that's my longest chain of carbons. So that would mean that my my molecule is an octane, and on carbon two, I have a methyl group. So this would just be two methyl octane. Um, they're pretty straightforward as long as you understand what the structures are. So I'm going to click back and see if you've chatted with me again. So Austin, you put in both um, because it's not implied that if you only put in one, oh my gosh, that is so grainy. Can you guys see this at all? I haven't looked at the screen. I'm so sorry. Maybe I need, I mean, if I draw big enough, I guess you can see it, but that typing is hard to see. I'm sorry. I'll have to tinker with my settings next time. Um, but yeah, so uh, when you're putting in your um, naming and your numbers and stuff, you know, like, so let me, let me actually draw it and give you an example. So let's say I have, mm, two constitutional isomers of cyclohexane. Okay, just for example. So one of them is a diol that looks like that. And one of them is a diol that looks like that. Okay, when we would go to name these, so let me see what I 
that I can hopefully make this look a little bit bigger. So in this case, it would be one comma one, I have that wrong, I'm sorry, cyclohexan, cyclohexane, right? Um, one, one dial. Now you might say, why'd you not put the E off? That was one of those weird rules I put on the board very briefly where if you have um, a consonant, like a D or a T, so dials or trials, you leave the E there so you don't have cyclohexane dial. So it's cyclohexane dial instead. And then over here, this one would be cyclohexane, oops, one, two, three, four, dial. So you definitely put in both numbers because if you don't, it it would make somebody look at it and not know exactly where they were. It's not understood that if you only put one number there, that it's going to be there. So it's it's consistent throughout with that in that regard, which is really nice. It means that you do it the same way every time. Um, oh, well, that's great, Austin. Hi, Delphia. I remember who you are now. Would like an example of how to draw a tert molecule. Just any tert molecule? Okay. Um, I can give you more than one example. So you can kind of see two different contexts. It's October. Let's make this orange. So let's say I have, I guess it helps if I draw it first, right? Let's say I have a thing, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. And so we're looking at a decane here, right? Let's say I'm looking at decanoic acid. So if I look at this, my parent chain is definitely decanoic acid, right? I haven't added anything to it yet, but I'll tell you that's what it's going to be. You could use tert butyl or isopropyl or inpropyl or sec butyl or any of those things if you have it as a substituent on a larger molecule. So this would be an example of a tert butyl group on decanoic acid. So where did I put that? So five tert butyl decanoic acid. Okay. Um, you could have a sec butyl group on there, like what I just put there. Um, so in this case, you would have five sec butyl decanoic acid. So that's if you're naming it as a substituent on a longer chain of carbons. So you would name it basically exactly how you would a methyl group or an ethyl group or a propyl group or an isopropyl group, right? Um, but you can also use it as the parent chain. And that's going to look a touch different. So if I have so let's just do this one. That one, because it is the parent chain is propane and the alcohol is coming off on carbon two, we would just name that isopropanol, okay? If I had an extra carbon there, it's no longer isopropanol, Now it would be tert butanol. Now you might notice an inconsistency with iso, you don't usually put a, a dash, and with tert sec in, you do. Um, not my rules. They also made it so that the iso gets alphabetized, whereas the tert sec and stuff does not. Um, that was not my choice, so. If you had a tert butyl group as a substituent, you would still name it as a B. But if you had an isopropyl substituent, you would name it as an I. I have not gone into that level with detail, and I do not expect you guys to know that. But if you kind of did, you might have noticed that. And that that's the reason for it is, again, this is like the antiquated system. This is not like the proper naming anymore. Um, but the names still get used a lot in just speaking. Um, 
is there an alternative name besides isopropanol? Yeah, it would be propan to all. That would be the IUPAC name for it. So Joanna, Joanna Marie, uh, can you please ask Delphia if what I just said made sense? Did that answer her question? Oh, my hood fell off. <laughs> I'm glad I entertain you. I have to try and make organic chemistry fun, right? Lord knows. Lord knows it needs some help in that area on its own. Twinkie, what are you doing, buddy? I'm gonna give you guys some Twinkie Cam. He and Onyx are both over on the bed right now. You can see my messy bed. What you doing, bud? He's the dog that has no legs. <laughs> Bailey wants an example of a sex something. Just, just a sex anything? Okay. Are you guys like in a big room watching me or something? Cause, um, I don't know if you want to see my pores that close up or <laughs> a couple semesters ago, I found out there was one group of, and yes, I will give you that Bailey. Um, just try and pull up the right screen. Um, I had a group of students that were watching me in Panera <laughs> together, like with the the, the audio on, like all these poor people at Panera were having to learn organic chemistry against their will. And then uh, the other group of people were, they would get in one of the lecture classrooms and watch me on the big screen. And I'm like, guys, that's absolutely horrifying. Nobody wants to see me that big. You guys don't want to see me as it is. Um, okay. Ah, I went bolder than that. Secbutyl butyl attached to something. So I know we haven't learned how to name benzenes yet, but secbutyl benzene. Secbutyl cyclopentane. So that would be if it was a substituent on something. And then if it is the parent chain itself, so I could name this one um, secchlorobutane. Yeah, that's right, secchlorobutane. Um, uh, secbutylamine. Also, right, these aren't your questions, Austin. These are all Bailey's, right? <laughs> Bailey would also like an example of the normal prefix being used, like is the in the actual prefix. Yeah, so the reason you don't see me using in a lot is uh, you usually only use in if you are using that as the parent chain. So... If I had, I don't know, some big honking something, um, and I have a three carbon chain coming off, you would normally just call that a propyl group. You don't need to call it an n-propyl group. It's understood that it is a just an n-propyl group if you don't put anything on there. Um, same as if I had a four carbon butane chain, okay? So you would just say butyl or propyl. You don't have to add anything to it. However, you would use, let's see. Here we go. So you could use it to distinguish between these two 
constitutional isomers of butanol. So the top one you would say is n-butanol, and the, top, the bottom one would be sec-butanol. So that's more how you use those is when they're part of a parent chain, or when they are the parent chain, I should say. Austin, can you also ask uh, if uh, that made sense to Bailey? <laughs> Any more tea for this conversation? Okay, well, Bailey, that's not my fault. <laughs> You'll just have to watch afterwards. check my email real quick to make sure nobody's emailed me questions. <laughs> okay. No Gmails. If you weren't here at the beginning, like 40 minutes ago when I started this, my, uh, University account has been uh, compromised. A bunch of the professor emails were compromised somehow. Who's Bailey? Who's the Zane? What? Anyway, so now I have no computer. Um, no, no campus computer. I have my Chromebook and then my home PC. Um, I have no access to One Stop or to D2L or to um, my campus email. So they basically locked my system out. They locked me out of the system and basically disabled my account until they get my computer scanned. So, yeah. Bailey sits in the back. Who is Zane? Zane, are you in my class? since Bailey wasn't paying attention. Um, there's two examples on the board right now or the screen or whatever you're looking at. One is in butanol and one sec butanol. If you want to get real exotic, you could do tert butanol or isobutanol. Are there any more questions? I have a meeting tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock with all the hydrogens attached. You need me to do that again? It's not going to look any different than when it was in your notes from the first time I did it. I'll do it though because, well, I like doing it. Cyclohexane chair. Up and down it. Ooh, let me do it. Let me do it the real uh, professional way, where you can like see it going behind there. Look at that at the angle. And two overbond, Ben. Two overbond. Now you guys know the dirty secret on how I do this in my head because I'm actually doing it out loud. Two overbond. There you go. Cyclohexane with all the hydrogens attached. I do need to draw on the hydrogens though, otherwise I just drew a dodecyl do substituted, no, what would that be? I don't know what 12 hydrogens would be considered, or uh, 12 methyl groups.
Joanna, was that your question? Co wants to know why carboxylic acid doesn't need a number, because it's always going to be on carbon one. Same with aldehydes. Who the hell's Brendan? Why is anybody in here that's not in my class? This is like not the most exciting thing ever. <laughs> you will dumb now. <laughs> it's okay. Sometimes it's just seeing it a bunch of times. But again, it's not going to look any different than what you have in your notes, except maybe I color coded it different, you know? That's just how the cookie crumbles. I made a spooky boo for you guys. Absolutely, Rihanna. Go for it. Uh, Joanna, we have not gotten there yet. It's in chapter five. I think last time, maybe. I don't know. The exams that you guys have online, which I don't even know where they are now because I don't remember what I posted and I can't look at it to tell. But um, I covered through chapter five on the second exam. So we will learn about that. That was like the thalidomide thing I was talking about, how there were kind of like two forms. Those forms are called R and S for reasons I will explain on Friday. Co. Let me know if that made sense. So Austin, I can name an alcohol and an aldehyde compound, but we have not learned how to do that yet. Um, so, Um, we will learn to do that in organic too. What is the difference between gauche and anti? Well, that's pretty easy to Google. Um, and it's also in your book and in your notes, so I'm going to get real cheap on this one and copy and paste from Google. There you go. Anti and gauche. So there's anti gauche and eclipsed. That's what you got. Anti and gauche are the two types of staggered that you have in a molecule that has like two bigger groups on it that are not hydrogens. <laughs> Oof. Seriously, this is my favorite room spray. I've had it since 2010. I can only pop it out for Halloween. Delphia wants an example of determining stereochemistry from a molecule. Well, Delphia, you'll get plenty of those on Friday and Monday. No, you guys don't have class on Monday. Anti being less energetic, so more stable, yes. Um, so, uh, yeah, Delphia, we're not doing that yet. So let's not confuse people. We'll get there, young grasshoppers.
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> who is the Zane? I don't know who this person is. Why aren't you telling me? This is weird. It is Rihanna without the H. I told you, Rihanna, your name is spelled a little different than most people. I won't say it's spelled weird, but it's spelled a little different. I mean, my, my name is spelled different, too, so nobody ever puts the A in there. And then you get people that, like, accuse your parents of not knowing how to spell your name. No, they just... Irish way. Oh, you're Irish? No. Not even a little bit, actually. You know, these cute little ducks that they have at Arby's, I really wish that they had a squeaker inside them, and they do not. All right. One more question. Got a few minutes left. Not awkward, you're awkward. Yes, Caitlin, that is on Friday, chapter five. Not there yet. Dr. Peace students started that, I think, yesterday. I guess I'm behind her. By the Zane. Oh, that's fun. GTG study. I always did got to go. All right. Well, I'm not going to be staying up a whole lot longer tonight because um, I've got an eight o'clock meeting again tomorrow and again on Thursday. So if you do email me, you can email me on my Google account. If I can even think of the words I'm trying to use. Email me on my Google account. Um, we will hopefully get my computer back up and going soon but until then I have the permission from the Dean to get you guys to use my Gmail for you know just basic questions I won't be able to send you out emails um, about your grades I won't be able to post them on D2L Newman Projection Beach I think that's great why not Hayworth Projection Beach I think Hayworth Beach sounds pretty classy <sighs> Do you plan on having a child in the next two months <laughs> or month and a half? <laughs> All right. I'll see you kids tomorrow. Uh, not kids, adults, but you know what I mean. Okay, so I will talk to you later. Study hard. Um, I have the exam written. It is four pages. I have um, the same things on there that you know, we kind of covered in class. So definitely hit up your notes, hit up the practice problems in the book that look like the ones in the notes, you know, what cis and trans are, you know, how to draw a cyclohexane chair confirmation, Newman projections, that kind of stuff. Um, basic naming, and you guys should be in good shape, okay? Yep, all right, there we go. All right, bye guys.